Good evening. Welcome to Trading the Markets paid class edition. Um, this is a pre-recorded class. So um, today I want to talk about that. First of all, my, uh, my name is Witch Joseph and I am not a financial advisor. But uh, continuing on, I'd like to talk about the FOMC, the Fair um, Open Markets Committee. So this is the, a meeting that the Federal Reserve Bank has every month where they, dis where they discuss monetary policy and the interest rate. And the main thing is that the Federal Reserve controls the trajectory of the stock market, depending on how they feel that they're strict or loose, if they're hawkish or dovish, the market will either go up or go down based off those expectations. All right. So let's step right into it. Um, so right here, I have the actual minutes. So I feel all you guys that really want to get good at the stock market, study the Federal Reserve, study them. Now, this is the minutes from November. So you see, it's always like from for every month. And right here, you can see um, the chairman, Jerome H. Powell, that's the chairman of the Federal Reserve. Then you have John H. Williams, the vice president. Then you have all these um, Federal Reserve presidents of different states. And really look at these names, get to familiar with them, Brainerd, Bullard, Con Collins, Mester, Waller, George, Cook. So you just got to just kind of get used to them, you know, and um, really um, understand that these are the people that run our monetary that control our money and our policies and you can see some of the names like for example um right here you can see cleveland um that's um meter then you got um you know different states different um different different people you know master you got you got so just kind of get to know them the different presidents of the different states and um get, get to put a name to the face and then Watch when they speak and what happens. So, um, so I let me just go to my slide because I took certain um page. I read this whole document. It's about twelve pages, and um, if you have some time, definitely take some time skimming it and reading it because it really is letting us know what our outlook is in the future. So let me get to it. So right here, I took certain notes. Um, let's see where is it. All right, so. As you can see right here, um, let me do some annotations. So mind you, this was taken before CPI. I'm going to say it again. I'm just saying it right now. So 75 basis points was the November target rate. But as you can see, uh, 50, 50 basis points is the target for the December meeting. So this is showing that they're already talking about pivoting and slowing down rates slowing down the rate hikes so just something to notice you know and they talk a little bit about more so this is like page two um by the way and it also talks about the uk and um basically how they had a unstable um financial market basically they they used the bailey um the the ecb president he ended up um spending about 20 billion to bail out um, United Kingdom, England's bonds. So that was already showing what can happen when the financial market becomes unstable. And this is a real fear, as, you, as you'll see. So um, let me move to the next slide. So right here, um, I have it written right here. Um, if you guys can't see clearly, I, I also have it right here. Um, but basically, let me highlight certain things. So inflation is skewed to the upside, um, but there's sluggish growth, um, domestic spending, and um, there's a salient rise on the projection of real activity. Now, what you guys got to understand is that um, real activity risk is it, going to show, it means that there's a chance of, of, of um, recession. And basically, it will show that the Federal Reserve does not have to raise as much. If real activity is going down, then they do not have to rake, they do not have to hike rates as high. They don't have to raise it as much because the real activity is slowing down. And real activity is basically buying, selling, all the activity that makes our economy move. So this slowing down um, will definitely, because now it's it's in fear of, 
when the recession, when the when the economy is too weak, if we raise rates too hard, it's gonna destabilize that economy, and we don't want another situation like England. We don't want that to happen. All right, so, um, so that's that. So, um, yeah, this is basically everything I, I was saying. Um, so right now, what, what what may happen is that recession may be our new baseline, and because of the recession, we don't we, we the economy is slowing down. We don't want to move too quickly to destabilize the economy. Um, so that's one of the reasons why um, lower interest rate seems to be imminent. Let's see, clear this. So right here, um, this is part. A few participants commented that the ongoing tightness in the labor market could lead to emergence of wage price spiral, even though one has not happened yet. So wage price spiral is something that we have to be very careful about, you know? Um, but you'll notice, hold on, where is it? Um, EC, ECI is growing at a slower, a slower rate. So basically, um, the employee consumer in the index is slowing down, which is actually offsetting some of the um, inflation worries. Um, next, okay, this part right here. So um, broad equity um, indexes fell significantly in er early in intermediate period with inflation news and monetary expectations likely being the main drivers of stock price movements. However, equity group prices rises later, rebounded, ended in the period, um, essentially unchanged. Next. So it's saying that um, prices are kind of basically unchanged over the month, even though things did go down, now they're coming back up. But right here, you want to notice it's saying that impl option applied volatility, the VIX is slight, is declined slightly, but remain in the upper range. Now, this is before CBI. So let's look at the VIX now. So if you look at the VIX, I don't know if you guys remember this period. So there was a time I made a video and I said, before we were right here at the time, and I said, we, we've been in a lower um, period of the VIX that volatility is going to increase. So to, to, I told people to start hedging for volatility increase, and guess what? It did. And then guess what now? Now we're back into that lower quadrant, almost at the lows of the period from previous. So understand this, when the VIX is lower, option premiums are cheaper. A lot of times it's going to make the market go up even higher because volatility is lower. People are more risk on. People are more greedy, more hopeful as volatility decreases in the market. So these periods of time when volatility gets really low, it's all usually a time followed by market growth. Now, in correlation, also look at the dollar. So as you can see, the dollar is also coming down. And um, you guys remember, when a dollar goes up, it takes money. It, 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 all other asset groups go, go down when the dollar goes up. So when the dollar goes down, all the other asset groups go up because basically people rush and put and sell things and put them in the dollar when things are going down. But let's continue. Um, so, so this is this is showing that there's opportunities right now. Um, and going back to the VIX, an option play to look at if you if you follow the VIX. So this is the VIX. You can't trade directly, but you can trade um, UVXY. Um, this has been a, a good play for, that I played and made money off the options, and I see more more downside continuation, as well as VXX, and I also see more downside continuation in this as well. Um, but let me get back to the minutes, and then I can get into the play. So, um, so basically, um, ECI is coming down. Um, and also, this talks about the lag. So um, right here, um, due to ease of supply constraints, lower inflation in the medium term. So it's going to take time for, for inflation to, to finally hit. Because remember, everything's a month behind. And this was before CPI. And as you guys know, the last CPI inflation came down. So all of these, these um, notes are basically at a higher, more price than inflation level than we are currently at. So think about that. Um, 
So a lot of things are coming down. Um, rent is coming down. A lot of things are slowing down. Commodities are slowing down. You know, as you can see right here, commodity prices. So it's going to take lag for, for, for that to, to happen. So for that reason, um, it would make sense to slow down the rates at least. Because basically it comes down to this. Powell has the power to flip. He could either slow rates to 50, 50 basis points because if things get worse, he could always hike them again. Let me make these a little bigger so you guys can see. It's a little small. Yeah, so these are the choices right here. So Powell has the power to flip. He can slow down the rate hikes to 50 basis points, which right now we actually have um, a 70, 75% expectation right now. But because we could always um, raise the rates if things get worse. He could also freeze or reduce rates, take them back whenever he wants. The main thing to pay attention is two things. One, December 13th, CPI. That's going to tell us our new inflation. If inflation rate is even lower, the market is going to shoot up even more. If inflation rate is higher, the market is probably going to calm down. But right now, the last CPI was written, and this is where the market is going up. So then we have FOMC, just like these minutes that um, we were just reading from the last FOMC meeting that happens once every month. So um, in this FOMC, um, we're expecting 50 basis points. So the federal funds rate should run to go up to about 4.25. But the main thing is that with what's being seen, that the federal terminal rate has gone down. So so they're seeing that they're going to start to probably um, do that, honor that 50 basis points that you also seen in the minutes. So with that and all being said, the market is most likely going to go up based on that. But leading up until the CPI and the FOMC, do expect the sell up because the market should be anxious. So right now is the time to take advantage. And I'll give you guys one play to take advantage of this. And um, and I'll be off after that. So let me share my screen. So I talked about the VIX, and this is my VIX play right here. Let's see. Let me stop sharing for a second. All right. So I would go to um, trade all products. I'll type in UVXY. This is the VIX. So I would go out to the ninth because remember the meeting is coming up in December. I would go out this far and I would purchase these right here. The seven dollar, either either the seven fifty, the seven fifty puts for um, thirty eight dollars per contract, or these right here, which are the um, the seven dollar puts. So these are safer. But these also have a chance of, of falling. And the main thing is that right now, UVXY, if you look at it, I don't know we're looking at it on another chart, but I'll look at it on Thinker Swim as well on the daily time frame. So we see it's at 760. So um, it's been moving at a steady pace. Um, matter of fact, let me go to trading view. So you guys just look at my indicator that I use. All right, and this will be the last thing. All right, so here's um, VXY. Let's go to UVXY, right? And um, right here is the average daily range. So right now it's moving about 47 cents per day. So in two days, this potentially could go to seven dollars but price isn't moving a straight line it might go up and down up and down and it finally go that way as you see um it did some time in here it definitely did that and this downtrend is intact a lot of people will try to catch the bounce but the trend is your friend so until it starts to bounce do not try to catch a falling knife and um so the option is this right here like i said said i'm gonna go back to the option I would put in the order like so. UVXY, trade. Oh, hold on. Do it again. Copy, 
paste. Not paste. There it is. There it is. Now I'm gonna go to chart. I see what the option has been. Let's let's look at it. So look, this option is fairly new. Um, and you see today it went from five dollars to it high at 14 and close around 13. So I might wait for it to pull back, see if I can get around six dollars again, or maybe even eight. But um depending on how the market moves, I will definitely try to get this for less than fourteen dollars, less than thirteen. Ten dollars, maybe we'll see, but it's new enough and it has enough time that if you get it near these low numbers, you have a high chance of um, making profit. So that's it, folks. Um, thank you for tuning in, tapping in. Um, look out for my next video where I talk about my trading journey. And if you're interested in this type of content, join gold, join the paid classes to get this include exclusive um, scoop on the market and how to position yourself properly. If you're interested in one-on-ones, um, you can also reach out. Have a good night, everybody.